Welcome to the IEC Content Studio here at IEC 2023 in Barcelona. Uh, today, our segment is Daily Dave, and our guest is Dave Haynes, uh, Chief and Editor from 69. Welcome, Dave. Thank you. What do we want to talk about? What's our topic today, Stefan? Today, we're going to talk about software. Dave, uh, anything revolutionary saw here at IEC? Oh, I don't know if I would say revolutionary. It's it's like display technology. It gets better with time, but I, I don't think I've stumbled across anything, at least not yet, that I thought, whoa, I have never seen that before. But you're seeing a lot more advancement and a lot more careful thinking about how software is being used today and how it re relates to a broader world as opposed to, I'd say for many, many years in digital science, you kind of acted like it was a walled garden and it was just this one thing you did and then you back out of that to do other things. And you're seeing more and more companies talking about headless CMS, which I think that's the way a lot of these companies really need to go. They need to be kind of the plumbing, so to speak, uh, and maybe just operate in the background, but work with a lot of other systems as opposed to just being, we do digital signage. Now all those other things, you use other tools for that. I think we need to dive in a little bit, you know, from because in the past, digital signage was like a monolithic system, right? Everything from content creation, content management, you had your daily photos and everything in there, all the way to scheduling and play out. Yeah. And now this world is changing. Stefan, you had, we had our conference and we talked a little bit about it. Could you just, you know, give a short introduction about that? Yeah, the, the thing is, um, digital signage software today must be composable. That's yeah. what you just described. I mean, just um, have the client use whatever tool they are using for content creation mm -hmm. um, and then they do it not in the digital signage tool because that's just I mean, that's not the core of the digital signage software. They use Adobe workflows or whatever they, they're comfortable with. And then um, they put it into a DAM, a digital asset management tool. Yeah. Again, for most of the clients, they use their content not just for digital mm -hmm. signage, but also for other channels like uh, social media, online mobile um, content. And digital signage is just one playout channel for them. That's why they're not comfortable um, hand dragging and dropping um, content into the digital signage tool, but they want it managed in a central place. And then only there's the connection to the, um, to the digital signage CMS via headless uh, architecture, via headless CMS. And then you cover the uh, digital signage software, the distribution and the playout part. Yeah. And that's the new world we're in. And that requires, um, normally an open API um, architecture or API first architecture. Yeah. Because we're talking about standards. Yeah, I was really impressed by uh, one company that going back about, they, they came to a conference that I did in Toronto about seven years ago and said, we're getting, we're a software company, we're getting into digital signage and they wrote a platform and the CEO contacted me about three, four years later and said, that platform, tearing it up, we're starting over because we realize we need to be headless. We need to work with all these other systems. And it was very different from a lot of companies that maybe for business reasons, maybe pride of ownership or whatever, they're, they continue to build on something that's been around in some cases for 30 years. And boy, that's hard to, hard to be really current and work with all the systems doing that. And that's the biggest challenge. I mean, most, most companies have a legacy um, out there and they have a network installed out there. Yeah. And then I'm starting all over again from Greenfield's modern architecture, which is basically cloud-based architecture. That's a big step for many companies and how to manage that transition from your legacy old software stack to a really modern architecture, yeah. that's really hard to do. I mean, it, it's great if you have a lot of developers. I was talking to uh, one company that they said they had about 50 staff and most of them are developers and they do a lot of custom work. And that's good if, it's, if you can replicate that work and use it for something else, but if, if you're continually doing custom, boy. But Dave, that's really interesting because we had one big uh, software company in Europe. They said, you know, we had to reinvent our software on, on the green field because they couldn't find any developers more anymore for their old for their yeah. old architecture. So yeah. I said, you know, we want to get the young ones from university, you know, who are really motivated, and nobody wants to, you know, develop in this old language. So they all want a new a new modern system. So that's quite interesting to hear that basically the companies are forced to to move to this new architecture. Yeah, I had a lunch with a CEO last week in uh, in London. Uh, look at me, I'm special. I was in London. Yeah, <laughs> London, Barcelona. <laughs> and he's been active in this space for about 10 years. And he was saying how he's also kind of tearing up what they were doing because 
you said so many developers want to find what they need on uh, things like GitHub. So the, what, he, what their design is something that just kind of makes it extremely malleable for developers to work in the way they want to work with, as opposed to here's this package solution. This is how much it costs a month. You know, use it this way. And yes, we have APIs, but it's not quite the same thing. And the, the other big trend in software we're seeing on, um, is the layer be below the CMS, it's all the managed services, network management, yeah. player management um, part of it, because that becomes more and more important. How do you see that? Well, I, I think in some cases they have to have that because if, if, you're, if you're a generalist solution, that's, you know, we do digital signage, what you want, you're, you're, you're competing mainly, mainly on price. And, you know, you, you hear about deals being done that are, I'm using US dollars here, but five, six, seven dollars a life. Even not three dollars. It's unbelievable. I yeah. was going to say that, but. <laughs> and, and the standard feature set is pretty much when defined. It's yeah, standard. so you, you, need other, you need other revenues. And one of the ways you can do that is recurring services and managed services. It doesn't bind you to a customer, but it makes you it makes it harder for a customer to back out of it if you're if you're basically managing the whole service for them. I, I worked with a, I did consulting for a big, now global uh, QSR chain, and yeah. they were with one software provider, and they they wanted to look at other solutions. And I said, well, what do you think of the software? Never seen it. Well, can you give me the login so I can tell you about it? We don't have one. It was completely, completely managed services. And at the end of the day, they, the, the, this client stuck with this software provider, even though we we're kind of irritated by them because it was just so hard to back out of it. So I, I don't think that's the way you want to operate your business, but it is practical reality. Yeah. And the, and the other dimension is of it, um, I think networks are becoming more complex and on where you had service level agreements that were more like, okay, if something breaks, we're going to go and fix it. Yeah. Towards a uh, way of doing business where when, when digital signage becomes business critical, it's active monitoring of the uh, network. And actually as a integrator or a service provider, um, and you don't wait for the call of, of the client, but yeah. you see it in, in your uh, backend and you send somebody out uh, to fix it without the client even having to call. And, and th I think that's that's a change um, we see at least over here in Europe. And yeah, I, I was really interested in uh, your summit yesterday. Uh, I forget whether it was Florian or, or you that was saying how we're going to see digital signage as a service, just as now you can buy a car as a service apparently. And like Even it, more extreme, maybe by the hour at the end of the day, power by the hour. Yeah, That's in the most extreme form of it. It's yeah. because at the end of the day, many of the clients out there, they don't want to buy a screen and find a software and integrator. They just want the thing working, you know, that's all yeah. they want. <laughs> and and, uh, and in many industries... How silly. Exactly, yeah, how silly, exactly. It's not the core business, you know, so it's, yeah. it's, it's, not, it's not what we really want to do ourselves. So for them, they couldn't care less if it's a Samsung, LG or whatever screen, what kind of software, they just want the service. Yeah. And this is really, you know, this is what we see online and this is something where we believe, you know, eventually the world can go there. It's not probably next three, five years, but yeah. it, it's something we believe the market could, 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 could go to. Yeah, I, I, I look at all these companies and I've, I've, I've talked to a lot of software providers this week and it's interesting. They all seem to be saying they're doing well, uh, but you know, there's still too many of them. And, and now you have monsters like Samsung really, really pushing hard on their own software stack. And how, how do the small guys, whether they're in a region or in a vertical market, how do they compete with that? I, I, I think the potential you just mentioned, vertical market specialties. I think if, if as a software company, um, you really understand the needs of that specific vertical, there could be potential for differentiation for software companies. Yeah. But well, yeah. also quite interesting to see at the LG booth, for example, I, for the first time I saw them like showing all their uh, 10 different software stacks they're offering, Tef and Service. I've never seen them in the past. They always were hiding it somewhere, yeah. but it was really big on, the, you know, on their booth. You could really see this is our you know, managed service software, this is our CMS for QSR, this, this, and this. Yeah. So you see them really opening, communicating it because mm -hmm. obviously the hardware manufacturers also need to have some recurring revenues eventually. You know, for them, yeah. service is also important. It's not like selling in hardware and then uh, live with it. You know? Very little margin in panels. Exactly, exactly. Good. I think we're almost running out of time. Um, Dave, it was great that you're here and we, that we talked a little bit about software. And uh, I'm sure there's another Day's Daily coming up. Thanks a lot. Thank you for having me. Thank you.